We thank God for this opportunity to again bring you God's word in this season of lockdown and in this season when uh, we have so many reasons to complain, many reasons to live in a way that is contrary to God's word. But you know, it is in this season that your nature, your real nature will show. I like to stay with Mark chapter 9 throughout this season. Two reasons. We need a lot of faith in this time, and we need healing at this moment. Mark chapter 9. It says, when they came back to the disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. Immediately, when the entire crowd saw him, they were amazed and began running up to greet him. And he asked them, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you my son, possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. And whenever he teases him, it slams him to the ground and he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and stiffens out. I told your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. I'll come back to verse 19. Now we need to understand that this season is supposed to bring out our spiritual nature, not to discourage us, not to make us regret or bemoan our faith. This boy had been sick all life. The devil wanted to kill him. This virus wants to kill you. Did he succeed? Did the devil succeed to kill the boy? He didn't. So he will not succeed to kill you. But you see, he had a father who cared about him. And so I'm standing in faith as your pastor, as your spiritual father, and I'm interceding for you that this virus, the devil that has brought his agents in the form of this virus, will not kill you. Not possible. The enemy will not kill you in the name of Jesus. Now, the disciples had tried. He, he came when Jesus had gone up the mountain with the three key disciples. So the remaining nine could not produce the results of that team. Now, that there are some things that have not yet happened in, uh, in your life does not mean they're not going to happen. You said the whole church is away. No problem. They've prayed. No problem. It hasn't happened. No problem. I want to guarantee you that God's miracle power is going to be manifested in your circumstance in this season. Now, notice what is it. They were discussing his problem became public discourse. I don't care how many people know about your matter. My prayer for you is that when you have an opportunity to present it to God, you will speak up. You, you, you will not be too embarrassed to own up. The man answered the crowd. Jesus was asking everybody, what are you discussing with them? And the man said, one in the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought you. I didn't just come to like everybody came. Listen, I have a problem. I have a need. My son is ill. And he understood clearly what were the issues. Possessed with a spirit which makes him mute. Whenever it is, he slams into the ground and he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth and stiffens up. I told your disciples to cast it up and they could not. The man can tell his situation. And so he met with Jesus and told him the story. Praise God. I'm excited, I'm happy, I rejoice at the opportunity we have daily to bring our matters before God. But you see, for some of you, you are more interested in complaining to people. I'm glad that the man continued and said, you know, he complained against the disciples. I told your disciples to cast it out and they could not do it. Like many of you would think that, well, we've not been able to bring your results. I'm glad if you complain to God about me. I'm excited because, listen, to, and he answered them and said, Oh, unbelieving generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. What I cannot do, God can do. What I cannot do, God wants to do for you. So that I have prayed and no result has come. And now I bring you Jesus. Tell him your problem. Speak to him. Don't get discouraged because I have prayed for you one time, two, three times, and the result did not come. No, no, no. Hang on. Press forward. And one of these days, now Jesus shows up himself. I'm excited at, at, at letting you know that all things are possible. 
What I don't know is when they will happen. But at the depth of deep down in my heart, I am fully persuaded that all your sicknesses will be healed, that all your needs will be met. What I cannot tell is when that will happen. May that when be today for you. Listen to verse, verse 22. Verse 20. And he asked his father. Or verse 20. They brought the boy to him. When he saw him immediately, the spirit threw him into a convulsion. And falling to the ground, he began rolling around, foaming at the mouth. And he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood, it has thrown him into both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help. Now understand that the enemy plans to destroy you. Understand that God plans to deliver you. He plans to meet your need. Your precarious, your bad situation is not of God. This man knew clearly that the affliction on his child was not brought by God. The enemy, certain. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to destroy your marriage. He wants to destroy your business. He wants to destroy your life. But Jesus came that you might have life. And then he, he had the opportunity. And he said, he said, take pity on us and help us. And, and Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. And I'm excited. It's time for you to begin to think all things are possible to me. That's what Jesus said. He said all things are possible to him. Who believes with God all things are possible. All things are possible with God. And you need to understand that it is faith in God that's going to bring positive results in your business. It is faith in God that's going to make sure that your store of food does not dry out. Pastor, I thought this was in the Old Testament. These are the times to manifest God's supernatural power in your life. These are the times to show that you are, you are not a mere man. The Bible says ye are gods in King James. That's the language of prophecy. Ye are gods. It's not the pastor. Say to him that believeth, all things are possible. He doesn't say to the apostle. He doesn't say to the preacher. Because many preachers I know believe nothing. They believe nothing. All things are possible to them that believe. Child of God, you've got to believe that this season, your business will go down. You've got to believe that this season, you're not going to die of this virus. And for you that has been bedridden, I don't care for how long. You've had problem with your eyes, I don't care for how long. This is possible. He said, if you can do something, help us. And Jesus is saying, it's not if I can. If you can believe, all things are possible. I like verse 24. Immediately the boy cried out and said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. I believe, I believe. That should be your refrain in this season. I believe I'm not going to die by the virus. I believe none of my siblings is going to be touched. I believe that my needs are met. I believe that nobody around me is going to contract the virus. Lord, help my unbelief. Sometimes I think that, well, this food <laughs> won't, won't see us through. Sometimes I think that my needs, are not, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. Sometimes I'm wondering, when life gets back to normal, what would I really be doing? That's when you say, Lord, help my unbelief. Now, you can't speak like that and God fails to show up for you. Let me take you back to the basics of faith. Listen to what happened after that verse. Look at verse 25. When Jesus saw that the crowd was rapidly gathering, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and get out and, and do not enter him again. And you know the rest. Crying out with a loud voice, threw him into convulsions, came out, and the boy became as much as a corpse. That most of them said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, raised him up, and he got up. You may look like you are dying. Your business may look like dead. Your marriage may look like dead. Things around you may look like, well, there is no hope. Keep hope alive. Just as the Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. It says if this, that same Spirit dwells in you, that same Spirit will quicken your mortal body. That same Spirit is going to bring life to you. This is the season to manifest it. 
Church, this is a time. This is a time when things are going normally. Every sinner can prosper. But now, this is the time to manifest the power of God. This is the time to show that you don't beg. That in these two, three weeks of not making a, a dime, of not making income, you did not knock on anybody, anybody's door. God supernaturally met your need. And you had leftover to meet your neighbor's needs. Some people are wondering, how did you do that? Say, God answered my prayer. Friends, I told you at the beginning of this season, for many of you who have never lived your life supernaturally, this is the best time for it. You've never done your business supernaturally. This is the best time for it. So you need to have results like this man had. You can't watch your boy die. It's time to stand in faith. People may be ashamed to carry their problem to God in public prayer. Not this man. He came with his. He brought his own. They said, well, why don't you... You know, Nigerians trivialize and joke with everything. Did you get that joke that went around on Easter Monday? There's somebody down on Twitter or somewhere. Somebody said, Jesus, eh, now that this, give me this, give me that. And somebody else replied to him and said, ah, he has just resurrected. Allow him to eat something first. But you can't... Listen, your own life is not a joke. It's not comedy. Comedy. You don't have another opportunity. This is the time for you to manifest the grace of God upon your life. This is the time for you to manifest the power of God upon your life. May this be your testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to take you back to the rudimentary lessons on faith. So that you can understand. And, and I want to, I trust God that your life would, would be so such a supernatural life. That your neighbors, your neighborhood will be asking you. First John chapter 5 verses 4 and, and 5 says, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's 1 John 5, 4 and 5 from NIV. Everyone born of God has overcome the world. We overcome this world in the name of Jesus. Don't join people who preach messages or who tell stories that do not stay of faith in your life. See, faith is the currency of the kingdom. I don't care whether this, this virus is biological weapon. I don't care whether this virus is coming from, from radio waves. Whatever the source of the virus, we overcome him by the word of our testimony. We overcome him. Whatever rises against you in judgment, the Bible says you will condemn. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. So first you need to be a child of God. You need to be born again. You need to experience the new birth. If you have been born again, if your sins are forgiven, if, if you are, your life fits that description, the man who is born of God is like the wind. You can't tell when it's coming or going. People cannot explain your life. You wake up in the morning, a poor man. You sleep and in a palace in, and the same day. Your God visits. You know, there are supernatural things happening around you that people cannot explain. You probably not had a job, an income for 10 years, but you've never begged. You are the one supporting your neighbors. Friends, this is your time. Whatever, whoever is born of God. If your marriage is born of God, it will not go down. If your business is born of God, it will not. That's why, listen, our life should not be left to trial and error. Don't be, join ministry because you saw people making it in ministry. No, 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 no. Don't do, don't sell oil because you saw people. Faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. What is faith? Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. He said, now faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Hallelujah. Faith. The evidence. What makes me believe that God will meet my need? This two weeks. This three weeks. However long this God's word. So my father. If you read Mark, Matthew 6. You read the last 10 verses or so. It's amazing. 36, 38. Fantastic. He said my father feeds the birds. They neither sow nor reap. They don't have a store. But my father provides for them. If my father can feed homeless birds, will he allow me to starve? That's why you need to be born of God. That's why you need to be part of the kingdom of God. 
And then, now if you read that Matthew chapter 6, you will know whether you are in the kingdom or out. He said, for after these things do the Gentiles seek. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? What are your goals for this year? What are you looking up? Ah, this year I need to build a house. I need to buy a car. I need to do this. All your desires are physical things that will not endure. It shows where you are. After these things, what will I eat? What will I wear? After these things, do unbelievers, Gentiles, seek. And if you seek the kingdom, first, he says, all these things shall be added. These things are going to come as additions. They are not your primary pursuit. That's why I don't beg. That's why you don't find me knocking on your doors. That's no. I make it more difficult for me to beg in this season. By declaring it publicly. I'd rather see me meeting needs. During the season. People say, Pastor, my supplies are low. How can we reach you? We've added you to our list. We're trusting God that something will come through. And you will. And before you know it, there's a call. Pastor, do we have people who need supply? To say yes. How many say no? We don't know. We'll send something to them. And then before you know it, 10 people, 20 people. Your faith must have results. Faith is the substance. Faith comes by hearing God. Like, the other thing you need to understand, that nobody had any outstanding result from God without faith. Some of you think if I have money, if I knew the president, if I knew the governor, if I knew the local governor. Listen, the man whose confidence is in man, Jeremiah 17, I think, verse 5 or so, it says that you won't see when good comes. Praise God. Oh, what a joy. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. I'm persuaded that my needs are met. Why are you sure? How are you? That's my evidence. God's word. I believe that faith is the strongest force in our planet. Verse 38 says, Of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in days as a mountains, in days and caves. Now you believe God to a level where, listen, this, some of these things don't make sense to you. It looks like you will starve today, but <laughs> eventually. If, uh, some of you know my, my miracle of toothpaste. 10, 15 years. Say, Pastor, you rejoice for toothpaste? Yes, the God who meets my need when I need a tube of toothpaste will meet my need of a plane when I need a flight. God will meet your need to the minutest details. By faith. By faith. I had a preacher's response. He was going to fly to another country and from this airport, you know, he's already out of the country and in, in two strange places. And they're telling him they accept chartered flights. And you know, regular poor Nigerian preacher, you can't have that kind of money to charter a flight. But he believed this is what God wants him to do. And here he is at that airport saying to God, what do you, what can I do? And then suddenly a pilot shows up and says, you demand to get on the flight. He was wondering which man are they talking about. He gets on the flight and they ask him, where is it? And they fly him to the place. He comes down from the plane and the plane flies back. I am waiting for your own testimony. Yesterday our father in the Lord, Dr. Mo Kwai, told us a testimony. Went to the bank. He was going to collect money for one of his projects. And he told them he needed five million. And they said to him, sir, you don't have that money in that in your account. So <laughs> and he said, and he said, uh, so why did you come? And some, you know, unbelievers have a way of trying to rub it in when the devil wants to embarrass you. And he said to them, Don't worry. Give me the next hour. The money will be in that account. And they laughed and said, From where? He said, <laughs> If you know that Dioma, you will understand that it's a man of great faith. And then he said, don't worry, I'm waiting. I'm not even going. So he stays in his car. He said, well, one hour is long, 45 minutes. Just wait. At the nick of time. Do you know those band that bank officials ran to him and said, sir, sir, did you do a transfer? What happened? He laughed. He said, you got 10 million. He said, I needed just five. Give me the five. Your faith must produce tangible result. Your faith must keep you out of harm's way. Your faith must. Faith is that. Now how do you build faith? Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith doesn't come by reading newspapers. Doesn't come by watching the network news and they tell you how many people have died today and they tell you the, the, the ah, who was tested 
you know the select what to tell us globally the people even managing this pandemic are not interested in us from the who to to everybody if they were you know there will be massive testing so that we can know who has the virus and who has it but you know that global leaders don't want that is when you have gotten the virus and you are at the point of death in some places even at the point of death they will deny you the test because it has become political now it's sad very sad and that's why you must stay at home stay at home is the greatest way you can secure yourself from catching do you have a scripture for staying at home great psalm 91 verse 10 it says this no plague will come near you are dwelling so what if you leave your dwelling then find your find the best for that yourself stay at home means stay at home don't have don't go visit don't allow people to visit you are roaming around you don't know who they've been with if people must come to your house get something outside let them wash their hand let them sanitize their hands and if you go to the market go to a public place in this season and come back get home and have a shower change your clothes say pastor does it come to that level faith without works is dead faith without works now faith comes by hearing god's word you will have faith when you listen to a god sent preacher someone who comes with a message from god that builds faith now how do you exercise faith number 1 you believe in your heart verse 9 of romans chapter 10 that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved you confess with your mouth you believe in your heart not by one small god and put in you are not pay money to that chase them and then they will bring your grandfather out from where he is and no 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 you believe confess with your mouth believe in your heart god has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness with your heart with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture whoever believes on him will not be put to shame my god shame will not be your portion not because you have money no but because you believe on him not one of us who believes on him will be put to shame not by the virus not by food supplies not by the form of transportation I look up to God on your behalf and I trust God that great things will that if you believe whoever believes on him will not be put to shame what is it your rent has expired you are on the verge of being put to shame isn't it amazing in proper places around the world governments are speaking to landlords our systems where the things are properly done to freeze rent they are making huge remittances to their citizens churches have a welfare system and i want to thank all the pastors who are stepping up to the game right now ensuring that people within their congregation have a way of having their needs being met now i want to thank governments too who have used this season to provide supplies and those who have not <laughs> it's 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 not right You say ah where do we get the money from? I don't know. But that's part of our job as leaders. As a pastor, I have people the other day I had to go out to see someone and I said they said pastor but aren't you know about I said I know about the lockdown. This is essential duty. This is what I what I have to see this person. I need to be sure that it's well with them. Praise God. you believe in your heart the next thing the next way you you manifest is prayer luke 18 is a fantastic lesson on prayer the story of a strong judge if you read the first eight verses and a weak old woman who came to the judge every day and the judge said to her no 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 i've dealt with stronger men i'm not i'm not going to respond to the woman came every day avenge me of i'm not going to resort to self help lord i'm trusting you the man changed his mind and responded to that but you see my 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 best scripture for prayer is Matthew 
Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Matthew 21, 22. If this is your Bible market, underline it. Whatever means whatever. Believing. It doesn't say ask in prayer crying. It doesn't say ask in prayer groaning. Because you can cry in doubt. You can groan in doubt. The important thing is trusting God. Believing God. Whatever. Lord, I need a bag of Gary. I need a bag of rice. I need, um, I need, I need security for this house. Believing. And I trust God. And you know, I keep saying many times, Mrs. Kafia thinks I'm callous. She doesn't think I'm showing enough concern. But I've given this matter over to God. How do I need to worry about it? The other two things, I will elaborate on that in my next lesson. Speaking with your mouth and corresponding actions. These are two, you cannot be trusting God to bless your marriage and you're using your mouth to run down your marriage. Say, this woman will kill me. This man will kill me. Or corresponding action. You cannot be praying for your marriage and then you are taking actions that are Imimika is a correct grammar to your marriage or running down your No, no, no. You're praying for your marriage to work. You're speaking that no, my marriage is a great blessing. My husband is a loving man. My wife is. Now, nah, that's what you're saying. Corresponding action. You act right. When you see your husband, you smile. It's not time to start cursing. I do all nothing. But you won't me have you nothing. And you complain and complain. No, no, no. If you don't, if your actions don't match your acts, you know, your, the things you ask God in prayer, those are not going to work. Friends, I'm going to ask you to stay with us. In our next lesson on Friday, same time, I'm going to be talking to you about those two major ways of expressing faith. And I want you to gather your household. If you have not yet turned your household into a church, if you've not been missing, go back, look at all the series online and be a meaningful part of what is happening. What is in short supply around your area now? I want to stand in faith with you. I want to pray with you that God will supernaturally meet your need. What is it that is going to bring you to shame? It's as if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will see salvation. You will never know shame. And I'm going to stand with you now and ask God to intervene in your marriage, to intervene in your supplies, to intervene in your circumstances. You are not going to be brought to shame. God will supernaturally meet your need. Shall we pray? Father, someone is saying, forgive my sins. He wants to become a child of God. As they ask forgiveness, Lord, may their sins be forgiven. Someone is saying, Lord, heal my eyes. Somebody is saying, Lord, heal my left leg. Somebody is saying, Father, I need power in my, up, in my left arm. I need power in my right hand. Whatever it is, anybody is trusting you for now. I speak healing over your people. And I declare you free from every infirmity. Not just the symptoms of the virus. Whatever affliction that has come from the enemy upon you. I command them to come off you now. Just as that boy got healed and totally delivered, I bring you healing in the name of Jesus. Be free. Be loosened from your infirmity. In the name of Jesus. We give God praise and we thank God for you. We know that we're going to be seeing on the other side of this lockdown. Have a wonderful time. God bless you. And keep in touch. Send the reports to the appropriate quarters from your own. Let them know that the church in your house is doing well. And have a wonderful season.